You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to Live and Lead for Impact. I'm Kirsten Ross Vogel, your host, and this is episode number 176. Today, I am speaking about a really important topic that I've seen too many clients struggle with, and I will be sharing three musts for managing a friend. So a big part of the work that I do is coaching leaders to build high performing teams with leadership and communication strategies that eliminate the friction that can occur while scaling or working with family and friends. So here's the thing. A lot of times as entrepreneurs start their businesses, they reach out to those they already know and trust and they invite them to participate in the business. Sometimes it's as part owners, decision makers. Sometimes it's just in positions to help out. And there are so many trip ups that can happen if you don't make those decisions with intention. So let me ask, have you hired a friend and are now second guessing the decision? Or perhaps you're pondering it. You're thinking, we already know each other. I trust them. It'll be way better to work with them than anyone else. So while working with friends is not certain to fail, there are definitely some trip ups you want to avoid and using some specific strategies before you agree to work together can help make it smoother. After all, there's more at stake when there's a personal relationship involved and you don't want work to get in the way of an important relationship. Here are just some of the scenarios around friendship that I've helped clients work through. One, our new employee isn't working out and he's the son of one of our best clients and a really good friend. Here's another. I hired my friend to help him out. He didn't have the exact skills I needed, but he really needed a job and I figured he'll be able to work through it and figure it out. He's not doing anything else. Well, it's not working out. He's not doing the job. He's not figuring it out. Now what do I do? Or this one. We were such good friends when we worked together. We do all kinds of things outside work and had a ton of fun at work. Now I got this promotion and she seems really mad at me all the time. Or he treats the core who were with him when the business started way better than he treats the rest of us. And then here are some of the other ones. We live in a small town. Everyone knows everyone. Or they needed a job. You needed the help. You became friends as coworkers, and then you got a promotion. You were managing them and became friends. All of these can lead you to the struggle of working with a friend. And so I said I was going to share the three musts. Well, here they are. One, commit to keeping it separate. Two, communicate that it will be separate. Three, actually keep it separate. So do you get the bottom line for this? Keep it separate. You have to keep the relationship, the friendship and the business relationship separate. They're two complete different entities. I'm not saying it's easy, but it really is a must. So here are a few keys. Don't share business information they shouldn't know. So sometimes, again, they've been your trusted advisor through all kinds of personal things. You grew up, you've known each other since elementary school. You trust them with everything. But in terms of business, find a different and appropriate sounding board. One, if things go awry, they may know things about the business they shouldn't. Two, it builds friction in the business when other people believe, and this it's whether it's true or perceived, that there's preferential treatment. Sometimes, and I've seen this, friends with more information than they should have kind of hold it up against other other people in the business. They want others to know. Maybe they won't share the secrets, but they might share the fact that they know the secrets. And that's not good. Two, keep your at work time together to a minimum. Again, the more people see you together, the more they believe that there is real differential treatment. And so if they think that they're getting preferential treatment, uh, it's going to change how they're 
treated and how the team as a whole works together. The third, keep outside work activities on the down low. You don't have to hide them all together, but you don't need to promote them either. So you've had a social life before. You'll continue with your social life. Again, I highly recommend not tucking work. Just have the same old conversations that you've had the whole time you've known each other. Um, so don't hide it, but don't promote it. So we live in a world of social media. Stay off of social media. Don't post all the pictures and no joking or recapping during work. People start to feel left out. They, You don't need to hyper focus everyone on the special relationship that you have. And if you bring it into work and have secret inside jokes or, oh my gosh, that was so funny, um, people feel left out and you want the team feel within your team. Next, Pay attention that you aren't giving preferential treatment. Like I said, whether it's real or perceived, it's fact. And so you really need to do all that you can to make sure that there are no instances where it looks like there is preferential treatment. And, you know, call it out. You know, sometimes the elephant in the room needs to be talked about. So let people know the barriers that you're putting in place. Um, acknowledge that you have this outside uh, relationship that you've had forever, but that you are keeping the boundaries and not discussing with them or sharing business and work outside of work. I once had a digital media client, I alluded to this earlier, where the core few that had been in the business since the beginning, really um, the rest of the team was hyper-focused on any little thing that the owner did for or with that core. They assumed that there was preferential treatment. Now, was it real? Mm, not really, honestly. I did a lot of work with this organization, and it wasn't. This business owner actually did a ton of special things for all of the employees. But the employees who didn't feel like they were part of that core, who hadn't been with him since the beginning, would minimize or overlook the nice things that he did for them. I mean, and we're talking like branded jackets and extra time off and going to lunch with him, going to concerts with him. Uh, he was always giving away concert tickets and inviting people to outside work events. Um, but they would minimize, again, Humans have this way of creating perceptions, and sometimes they twist facts to fit their perceptions. And so in this organization, they would minimize and overlook any of the nice things that he did for them, for them, and then hyper-focus on the things that he was doing, which actually were very similar for his core. And they used that as data to support, see, he gives preferential treatment to his original core. So definitely have the conversations, pay attention to what it will look like. Um, and just be cautious about what you're doing and try to make sure that you are being as fair as possible. And so, and then the last is transparency, which I've already stated. So just call out the elephant in the room rather than acting like it doesn't exist. You don't have to be defensive. Um, you know, just share the commitment that you've made to assure that the relationship doesn't have a negative impact on the business. And if you're in the scenario where you've hired the friend because they needed the work and you knew they didn't have the skills, call it what it is, a bit of charity for a friend. Calibrate your expectations of them accordingly if it's already happened. If you're just contemplating it, think long and hard before you move forward. Building resentments from less than stellar performance in your business can throw a wrench in your relationship. And it can create collateral damage within your team. Remember, preferential treatment perceived or real generates frustration among those who are performing. So if you're kind of letting someone skate by because of the outside work relationship that you have, the people who are performing, who are picking up the slack will start to be frustrated because that is preferential treatment. So if you want to help out a friend, maybe bringing them into the business isn't the best means to do that. So I just ask you to put some extra consideration into that. And if you are a business owner who's been reluctant to build out a high performing team, or perhaps have relied too heavily on family or friends in your business, I invite you to sign up for my free masterclass, Building Your High Performing Team with Confidence. I'll be sharing strategies to help you make the right decisions about the next skills that you need, the personality that will fit in with your business culture and the outcomes you're working to make in your business, and how to gain a more accurate picture of a candidate during the selection process. 
I've been doing this work for over 30 years and I'm going to be sharing it all. So I invite you to sign up for that by going to defeatthedrama.com forward slash HPT class. So that stands for high performance team, high performing team class. So again, that's defeatthedrama.com forward slash HPT class. I hope to see you there. It's going to be a super fun evening. Or if you got too much stuff going on and there's no time to wait and friction in your business is affecting results, you can always grab a spot on my calendar. I'm your team performance pro. I've worked with leaders just like you for over 30 years, and I can get to the root cause fast and design your fix. So grab a spot by going to defeatthedrama.com forward slash session. And as always, uh, you can find these links here in the notes from today by going to today's show notes. You can find those at defeatthedrama.com. Click on the podcast tab and then go to episode 176. So thanks for joining. I look forward to next time and get out there and make your bigger, bolder impact. 